Hello, my name is Ethan, and welcome back to another episode of Path of Exile Blight League. So, uh, in today's episode, I would like to discuss with you how to farm currency uh, in Blight League. So, the, the idea for today's episode, I want to not only include the more complex methods in the late game, I want to also, I want to thoroughly go over how to go from nothing, zero, you just started the game to, to super late game, okay? I want to go through in linear progression how I uh, personally do it and how I think it's a valid way of playing the game. So you've made your character. Let's say you pick Necromancer. You've already won the game. It's it's You've already made a better decision than everything. Okay, sorry, let's... Uh, you, so you, you, you go into the game. You, you pick your build. You do the normal... Uh, leveling up you do the campaign so you have your currency from playing the game you've probably spent some of the currency that you farm while leveling throughout the the story on the actual gear to fix your reses throughout and all that you know playing the game normally and now you you're you finish the story okay and you're like i need to get into mapping but my reses are shit and i and i don't know what to do and i it's so hard to make money and i can't map and Okay, so here's my first tip. If you're having trouble, yeah, you probably want to look at those reses. You could probably cap them for like a, a couple C. You can get a couple C within like uh, aqueducts. Just run a couple maps. You'll get a chaos and alk, like random currency. Do the cassia in there, the blight, you know? Uh, so like that starter currency is pretty easy, right? Now it's how do you transition from the 10 or like 5 or 10 chaos right so my my thought uh every league for now is uh if you can just get a tabula you're pretty much good to go on damage for all the way up to tier 16 mapping uh your survivability will be lacking but at least you will uh have the damage so you can cheese everything in the game as long as you're not hardcore so uh, I basically had 2700 HP as a necromancer with uh, my skellies were doing like millions of D shaper DPS uh, and I had just started like the story like uh, I mean mapping it was stupid so now uh, you're, you're fresh into mapping and this is how I recommend to farm currency so uh, you have your you have your atlas here and this would be completely blank now if you look in the middle uh, there is a completed bonus objective, uh, you get a, there's a bonus to completing the bonus objective for, uh, maps, and so you want to, on, on each map, complete the Bexter bonus. So this one is kill boss of magic or higher, and so it's kill boss of rare or higher, rare or higher corrupted. Um, you do all of them, and it increases the tier of map that drops, so if you do a hundred, of the bonuses you'll have a hundred percent chance to drop a higher tier every single time so instead of dropping a tier one it'll drop a tier two instead of a drop a tier two it'll drop a tier three etc it'll automatically upgrade it uh then it, when you get over the 100 percent, you have an additional percentage to roll two tiers higher basically um so that's cool and very helpful for map sustain because uh when you're doing like the late late game tier 16 it's the highest map and therefore when uh, you want to raise your like tier 14s and tier 15s that drop into tier 16s, uh, and without this bonus, you'll never have the chance. Yeah, okay, you get it. It's helpful. Um, so if you're having trouble with map sustain, and yeah, that that's gonna help you there. But basically, this is where I go with this. So when you just started mapping, you should uh, do every single map starting from tier one. You can buy them. They're not that expensive, especially this late into the season. You can just buy the tier ones, finish them, complete them, buy the tier two, or do the tier like do the maps you drop and and complete them. Now I recommend when you are doing tier ones just to elk and go. So that's orb of alchemy. Just turn it into a rare item and go. Uh, that'll be pretty good for returns. I don't recommend doing like it says magic. The only reason you would do magic is if you're struggling, but as a necromancer, uh, you can pretty much just off-screen everything and your damage is insane and your minions will just murder everything. I had 2700 HP and I did like Uber Elder. I don't know. Uh, it, it was really dumb. So if you're a necromancer, you're fine. Yeah. Uh, now, 
yeah, you go through, and I would recommend doing the entire atlas all the way up to uh, up to the guardians. Uh, now this is when you you'll get all your Zana missions done. You'll get your your elder orbs, your shaper orb, your you'll you'll get all the stuff. You'll complete your atlas. Uh, you won't have the unique maps, of course, but uh, this will just get you a very good start into the season. Um, and so when you get into I when when you get into tier six to tier ten yellow maps, uh, this is when I recommend to chisel your maps up with some quality. Uh, so you can chisel them up to twenty percent quality max, then alchem. And if you're if you're feeling ballsy, you could corrupt them technically. You could, but then you run the risk of getting mods that you can't run. You run the risk of run uh, getting um, it, it upgrading into the next tier, which can be good for you or you were trying to use this map and now you have to go buy another one because you messed it up with corrupting it um so i i don't personally i didn't use sextants until my entire atlas was completed and i had done uber elder and the reason i save like i like to use sextants later is in the case of i've done uber elder and i have my elder orb and i get to only run one map constantly and so I can actually use the sextants because they're only in this one area. Like, imagine I put the sextants here or, okay, this is a better example. You see these guardians? This is one. This is another. The sextants can't reach the other guardians. It's stupid. So if you do the guardians, you can't really use sextants because you'll do the other three while the other one has all the sextants. And if you, you, you can only have a maximum, I can only have a maximum of four. The way you get more sextants is, uh... First one is doing all the bonuses for tier one, so completing tier one maps, uh, tier tier one bonuses. The next one is complete tier two, uh, the yellow bonuses, the yellow map bonuses. Um, then the next one is complete the red map bonuses. There's three sections. You start with one, I believe. No, it was for doing Zana missions. No, it was you start with one, yeah. You start with one sextant, and then uh, the last one is doing the red maps, but I don't have the red maps anymore. I uncompleted uh, Guardians so that these don't drop when I'm doing the burial chambers, and only burial cham chambers drops. That's the secret there. Uh, so now my advice for uh, how to actually make money uh, when you're done completing your atlas and... Uh, and doing all those map pr oh, basically i bl the, the way i view the game is your storyline is progress you're just trying to complete the quest um and then mapping until you're done all the maps that is also progress you need to get all the bonuses get all the maps completed and once you have your atlas completed then you you can actually like upgrade your character and start farming and and doing the the late game i don't think you're in late game until you've done your atlas so uh, now, let's uh, discuss when you're in the late game. So, in the late end, this will also include red maps, okay? When you're in red maps, this is when you can start doing this kind of stuff to help you sustain more maps or to make progress quicker or to drop the maps yourself. So, uh, there's a few ways to increase the loot and map drops and just juicing the the density of these maps and to put more monsters on the maps and to make more items drop and to make more loot and just to really help yourself uh, get the most out of this stuff right so especially because the maps alone are kind of expensive when you get into the higher tiers like this would be 17 to 20 c um every time and so the amount you input could be similar to the map cost right so here we go this is how i would juice my maps normally uh i would uh, chisel them all the way up to 20% quality and then I would elk them I don't need to chaos spam because I can do every single mod uh, that happens and because I can do every single mod that happens I also corrupt because technically I can hit unidentified corrupted maps or I could hit eight mod maps the the juicy like 130% quant with 43% pack size like disgusting where it how it'll have like cannot leech cannot leech mana cannot regen can like you're like how do you even complete that uh the, it's just so many ways to sustain that I can do it it's really dumb though um and that yeah that's how I've been I'm at 88% it's pretty good we're almost there uh so you you have that and then you can put sextants so because i did burial chambers eldered it's in a white map area so i use white sextants 
but if you were doing obviously a different area you'd have to use the different sextants uh i i like the white sextants because they're cheaper i only use white i sell yellow and red um i'm gonna be honest and then if you want to juice up i only recommend using scarabs on tier 16s do not use them on anything lower um save them the so then once you have scarabs use them whenever you're doing like a juicy tier 16 it won't be that bad like uh i have i've been buying div scarabs uh, i haven't gotten another doctor yet but i bought some div scarabs like seven and uh gilded ones they were pretty fun to run on on burial chambers i was hoping for a doctor it didn't happen but if you hit a doctor that's like multiple x easy clap uh you can also buy sacrifices so these are the uh the fragments that you use to do uber uh to do normal at ziri but you can also add them to the map to add five percent quant um quantity and it also affects map drops so you can help your sustain that way so you can use sextants by rolling the mod sextant mods like add magic normal rare monsters add cold monsters add physical monsters add uh mirror rare monsters and uh cannot take reflected like there's so many ways to add monsters to your maps with the sextants and then you can also use um uh, obviously trying to get your map to be a higher quant and higher pack size through like alk and chaos spamming if you don't corrupt them you could go for like a certain pack size if you wanted um and then if you're having trouble sustaining with just scare uh sack frags then you should use scarabs they're they're worth it trust me scarabs are worth it it's just that you have a limited amount of space in your map device i also recommend if you haven't done it already and uh your character is strong enough to do tier 16 mapping then you should try the four-way legion encounter to unlock your five-way map device it's not that expensive and then you forever have an extra uh, additional um input into your map you get an extra sack frag or an extra uh scarab or whatever like it's really helpful and uh you, you do technically want to get the most out of what you're doing because it, time is money and uh, the more juicier the better but that's only when you're doing tier 16s in my opinion and then otherwise uh, if I was doing like a tier 11 you could put sack frags and you can chisel elk um, you could even corrupt but I wouldn't be using scarabs and I wouldn't use uh, sextants unless that is just the map I'm running yeah, but during progress, I wouldn't be using sextants because you're going to be moving around the map all the time and you're going to be wasting them on lower tier. Yeah, it's not great. And you'll be using red sextants to do the higher tiers. It's it's not great. Um, I think that covers pretty much... I, I like mapping. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Okay, so I covered mapping and that doesn't even address how masters influence how much you make. So... When I did all the progression, obviously, I unlocked all these masters from just playing the maps throughout the tiers. When you complete a map and the boss, uh, you would get a master sometimes. I think it's every time, but whatever. It was a little bit buggy in the first week, I think. Um, so I unlocked all these masters, and I saved them, and then I used them on the tier 16 maps. Uh, so I got the most bang for my buck. You could also save the yellow ones and use them on the tier 10s, because it's the highest for yellow uh and white you could use it on tier fives because it's the highest for uh white maps so that's a very valid way to save up the because this is new for this season you can save up masters now you can bank them and then use them later so this is cool it's just that if you use a master then you can't actually use a scarab that'll give you another master on this thing and then you can't it's like weird in that way and then you can't also roll a master on your map it'll give you an extra bank to master instead it's kind of annoying uh, i wish you could get like six ne no <laughs> six nikos on one map yeah, yeah yeah okay uh that'd be fun i don't know like imagine zero of six nico oh give me so much sulfite on one map that'd be insane okay uh and then the other thing is to uh, to explain i recommend doing masters i keep making videos about the masters and shit how good they are delving's great i'll show you again i'm at 629 delving i might be at 200 on here though fuck me i was using it to level a bit let me just scroll down a bit this is my path straight down mm -hmm. skip everything just go down 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 okay 
yeah we're down to uh 609 it's pretty cool uh we have some some stuff that's showing up now it's pretty neat and uh i just want to show you yeah so i found delving really good for money and and map sustain and it's free when you're doing the mapping so i recommend it if you haven't been delving you should um it's really good and then Zana, I've been trying to farm out those uh, distant memories. I haven't ran any map she recommends other than a distant memory, and I've gotten two. I haven't shown the other one because I'm kind of sad. It's a low tier one. It was like tier three because it... <sighs> RNG. Um, and then June, I recommend doing June. I may have just exposed that I killed the mastermind. I might have to put it in this video now. God damn it. And then Alva, the temples, is uh, really good for map sustain. If you So a uh, recommendation for Alva's temples is if you always go top right in the temple every time you're doing them in the maps, you're upgrading the room, and so you can get higher tier rooms, and then you'll get lots of chests and tons of maps, and it's really funny. Um, it's, a, it's a cool way of doing it if you don't understand the temples. And uh, yeah... I think that covers absolute. Oh, and Einhar, Einhar. Yes, if you don't know, um, when you're doing mapping and you're killing or capturing beasts and using nets and stuff, haha. Um, he stores them here, and if you don't know what you're looking for to know what these are worth, basically, you can type in what you want to filter, and if you go to uh, there's this website, it's called poe.ninja, uh, I'll leave a link in the description below if I remember, if you, if I don't, it's poe.ninja, basically on here you can look up prices, and because this is like set stuff, you could actually look up the beast, uh, thing, and so you'll see that the number one beast is a fenumal plagued, <clears throat> arachnid and it just so happens we actually have one from the mapping that we've been doing that's pretty cool and then krakic chimeral is the next one ferric tiger this is how you would do it right you could just go through and and check the top priced ones and see if you have them and if you do hey you can then if you go to his menagerie i believe you can trade him. You have to bring Chaos with you. I didn't bring it because I'm not going to buy any because it's fine. I'm not going to sell the Plague Directed. But you can buy Beastiary Orbs. And then when you right click and use it on the... You can capture the beast and then you can sell it to people. So that's a way to make the money off of that. Whereas I think these ones are a little bit more straight up. You just get the money. The, the beast one, you actually have to take it out of the... Yeah, it's a bit weird, but... I think that covers all the money making stuff that I've been doing. Uh, and then anything that's gambling, don't do it. So if you have a chance when you're, oh, oh, this is a big one. If you don't know in the game, you have offhand. Uh, so you, you can switch to your offhand here in the inventory, right? Or you can click X, that's the default. And uh, you could wear two weapons in your offhand and here i have specific crafted uh i have a crafted uh thing a mod here that's giving quality of socketed gems which increases the amount of experience gain on empower supports that's how that works the quality on these gems gives extra experience so uh they're 26 percent quality 130 percent increased experience and then in total it's like you need a 1.7 billion experience or something to level these up and then uh, they cost 20 C. Uh, you give them 20 quality, which costs another 20 C, and then you sell them for 115. So what some people do is they'll level these in their offhand, which they still get experience when they're in your offhand, even though you're not even using them. It's really weird. Uh, but hey, this is the fundamental part of the game of making money, the most out of your buck. Uh, so what some people do is they'll Val Orb their Empowers and like gamble uh, the, the level 4s to sell them for the big money. And uh, I believe that you statistically lose money because people like gambling and they will go out of their way to buy Empower 3s just to gamble it. Because they would prefer to gamble than to actually buy it for the straight up price because it's less fun. So, unless you like that, then I guess, hey, do it. 
you do whatever you want, obviously. I'm just telling you that if you're, it's only about money, then I believe you shouldn't uh, Valorb the Empowers unless you're really lucky. <laughs> and then uh, the other one is... I don't open stack decks, like, I don't open the random div cards, except for there was, like, a couple, like, currency, and I was like, ah, fuck it, and then I got five exalted orbs out of the currency div card, five random currency, I was like, no way, this one, Emperor's Luck, I got five exalted orbs earlier, I couldn't believe it, I don't have a clip of it either, because I, who the fuck ever expects that to happen, so... And that you just have to take my word for it. I don't really care if you do, if you believe me or not. You know, I'm not trying to like use that to be like, yeah, that's the greatest thing I've ever done. No, I don't, I don't, I don't care. It's uh, it's just something neat that happened for once. I got really lucky, and uh, I think that is the video. Let me uh show the map though. I believe that I shouldn't have a video of making money without uh one. One very, very not juiced burial chambers. But it's going to be funny because it's four sextant up uh, with sack frags. Like, we'll show if we can map sustain this one map. We won't even run a master. We'll just straight up harbinger. Always harbinger because money. And uh, let's go. So we'll show how how we're mapping. Uh, again, I like, I like mapping a lot. And this is... Uh, uh, we're only 34 million away. We were actually 10% away, and I did die once. I did die. I had an insanely juiced map. I did Beast Scarab. I did uh, Breach Scarab. I did Div Scarab, and I did, like, these are gilded. Like, it was crazy. I, I was lagging so bad, and my, and my screen, like, there was four Harbingers in one fucking area, and I went into it, and I died. Like, I actually just got bursted for, like... 15,000 I don't know like through everything uh it was and it was so fast that not even the cast when damage taken setup could uh out could outdo it it was insane yeah it was pretty fun that being sick dude look at oh yeah this also to this showcases the shaper stronghold this is super neat actually I forgot that it, yeah, mapping now is, uh, you better get some Chaos Res if you have a Shaper Stronghold. Look at all the fucking orbs that fly around, man. It's insane. They shoot orbs everywhere. It's like pew, 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 pew. Chaos damage everywhere. Cold damage everywhere. Wee. And I'm like, bro, can you not? But yeah, good luck uh, not having Chaos Res and doing a Shaper Stronghold. Nice. Got a defiled cathedral map, okay. Wow, the lag. Okay. We have a free Alva. You see how this happened? Because we didn't run a master. We got a free Alva in the map. So this is how I've been currently running it because you don't, uh, you can't bank ma master missions when you're, when you're not completing the map. You don't actually get to bank any master missions. So, uh, because I have the Shaper Stronghold, I don't want to complete the map. And, uh, so I never bank master missions. So I, d I actually have a disadvantage running a master in the map. I should never run a master so that i can have the chance of getting a master if that makes sense it's it's really shitty a really shitty feeling that i should never get beast scarabs and yeah basically no like anyone in this situation doing this should never buy beast scarabs yeah or what's another one that counts as a a master nico i guess but i'm gonna be running nico because i want sulfite because I want to delve. Poop, super poopy though. Unless I, uh, I guess I could do it on a different map that isn't burial chambers when I'm farming it later. Um, and I could keep my burial chambers, uh, shape or stronghold by like using uh, a Forge of the Phoenix or something instead, or Pit of the Chimera or something. That's pr that's not that bad of an idea actually.
earlier. Uh, so I open all the sarcophaguses in uh, in burial chambers, and uh, it's because I feel like I'm gonna eventually hit um, a doctor off of it, and I'm gonna cry. Like I'm actually just gonna cry because I've been opening every single goddamn sarcophagus forever. And then today I opened a sarcophagus, okay, and I got a divine orb, and that's already made it worth opening every single sarcophagus on on burial chambers. It's sick, dude like wow a divine orb i've gotten a few maps and stuff from the scar sarcophaguses but that's like the first big like currency drop never had an exalted orb out of the sarcophaguses i've also never had an exalted orb out of um what the hell is it called the blight no exalted orb don't know why don't know what's going on i swear it's impossible they did not want it to be like Legion, where there was just Exalted Orb being worthless, and that's why Exalted Orbs are 194 fucking C right now. What is this lag, man? Jesus, I'm getting overwhelmed. I got attacked by like four orbs, and uh, as I'm starting my Blight Encounter, please, another one. Let's watch. I could stand on top of these now. It's pretty fun. Whee! In no way it resets the energy shield every time it activates. Yes. Someone couldn't believe that. Someone couldn't believe. They think it's a bug. I'm like, no, no, this is how it is. This has been in the game. It's crazy. Six slots. Oh, I also have a feeling that the quantity of the map 100% affects the actual big loot explosion at the end. And possibly even the chest, but I that might just be misleading. I, that one I don't want to, like, vouch behind. But I swear the quantity of the map affects the loot explosion of your Cassia. Like, without a doubt. That one I'm, I'm, not, I'm so sure of with how much I've been doing this. And when I play a juicier map, Cassia's loot explosion is way better. And you'll see this one's probably shit, because it was a shit map. <laughs> it's like 85%. Look at that. Orb of Alteration, a 6 socket, and, and a Jeweler's Orb. That's it. So we have an Alva over there. Two more Alvos to do. Um... We've already gained a percentage. If you don't know, it's kind of tired. I've been doing this for quite a while. I can't believe I died. I lost like 29 million experience. Lost like uh, an hour and a half of time of XP. It's pretty insane. But we're going to hit 100. And then we'll ne we won't have to do this for this character ever again. And we can then push the, the progress of like delving and other cool shit. And the character to literally the fucking max it can ever be. I'm super curious what I could do to the game with what I've already done, you know? There we go. I wonder what the view... the view retention is going to be on this one because it's a bit longer and there's so much talking and so much that I went over. Hmm. The talking ones do better though. People like listening to me talk about PoE, and when I'm just doing like, I don't know, when it was the the blight maps, the view the viewer retention was pretty bad because I feel yeah it's AFK, it's boring, it makes sense like it's obvious. Whereas I guess with this these videos where I'm constantly talking and telling them tips, it's like almost um, a podcast thing. Where they can listen to it in the background while they play or do their own thing or whatever. And that's probably why it, it does better. It's more entertaining than me just sitting there doing fucking nothing. Me teaching or talking about the game is, is more entertaining. People like it, so... We'll see. I'm, I'm super curious on how this video is going to do. I've been This has been in anticipation for a long time. Um, I figured after that the 30x Ancient Orb gamble thing and the, like I've, I've farmed up another bunch of currency and shit i feel like it's a good time there's a lull in my in my action currently this was like a middle gap because i'm in between a level and i can 
like once I hit this level, I will be able to stop at technically 99 and I can fuck around for a bit, die if I want to, do some pushing and delving if I want, and then I can go back to leveling for the 100 after. But, like, I do not want to do anything risky at this point. Like, I'm so close, I just want to finish it up. And, uh, okay, so now, hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope you have learned something today. Um, I'm going to have to record an intro to it because I want to tell people to follow my Twitter. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to tell them to follow my Twitter at the beginning. It's going to be great. Uh, I want to be uh, like my Twitter is active. I upload, I, I post every single uh, upload on Twitter. So it's free notifications. It's easy. Um, I do that manually every day, every, I mean, every upload. And so. I'd like people to follow it so that they can use that as other means of getting my notifications. I don't know. It's up to them. And then I might use it more actively for other means. Because, uh, like, imagine the 30x Ancient Orb video. If I had uh, Twitter at that time with people who actually followed and were active, and I, I could tweet out, Hey, guys, is there anything I should know about Ancient Orb goddamn headhunter and then like a or i'm gonna tell maybe i post that i'm gonna do it and then somebody goes oh make sure you do an eye level 40 like the, just something small like that i swear could happen and uh okay anyways i hope you guys have enjoyed and i'm gonna now uh take take this second to thank uh my patreon supporters whoops wrong one this one uh white wolf and tradnix and then we also have uh Varkbone and Diverboy and White Wolf Trinix supporting on YouTube memberships. Uh, you can do the same if you can. I appreciate all support. Um, I've been doing this for a long time and uh, <laughs> it's fucking popping off recently, guys. It, the channel is blowing up and we're going to keep it going. Hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next episode. If this wasn't the thing for you, probably haven't made it this part of the video, but if this video wasn't for you, then maybe the next one will be for you, because uh, two videos a day, man, there's going to always be something for you. I got you. I got you, homie. I got you. Bye.